Yo, 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 What is up, everybody? So, back again with the smoking section. This is your host, Big Corpse. And, yeah, I want to say thank you to everybody who's been tuning in, everybody who listens, everyone who shares, subscribes, tweets, whatever about the podcast. I'm really, really working hard, man, and saving up some money to bring you guys better content, more, like, you know, more interviews, and more this, and more that, but in the meantime, you know what I mean, like, I'm glad that you guys hear me out, that you guys take some time to just hear my voice, and, you know, let it echo with you guys, Um, as you guys know, um, it is currently March 19th, Um, here in America, we are, you know, pretty much going through different levels of quarantine all across the nation, Um, coronavirus, 2000, or did I say it? March, March, March 19, 2019, I mean, 2020, my bad, <laughs> dumbass, uh, <laughs> it's March 19th, uh, 2020, um, coronavirus, COVID-19 has left uh, most of America in a uh, major, like, 24-7 quarantine, uh, most of the world is going through quarantine, um, I don't think there hasn't been a single continent yet, or country yet, that has been affected by it. Um, so this is a global pandemic. It's, it's kind of scary. You know what I mean? In the sense that like, this is, this has really changed the social constructs in which we know. Um, and I know that most of, you know, my 2020 episodes have been more about, you know, mental health and stimulating the mind and making sure that we're, we're balanced. But this episode, I kind of want to veer away and I want to make sure that I etch, my own piece of history that goes along with this, this, you know, this, 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 it's a catastrophe, you know what I mean, um, I have been quarantined in my house for the past two days, um, I'm, I literally stepped outside for the first time today, um, while recording this podcast, I'm gonna smoke a nice little green ball of some, uh, nice, uh, Bubba Kush Indica, uh, you know, to relax my nerves, because this is getting out of hand, you know, this is, this is getting to be really crazy, and, uh, I just want people to think of some things, like, this is, this is what's happening in America, so in America right now, a lot of people are stressing out, because, uh, a lot of jobs have been forced to close down, a lot of people are out of work, a lot of people in America, you know, they are struggling and, and worried about what we're going to do as far as our bills and our loans. Like myself, I have a car loan, you know what I mean? And, and a lot of us are stressing about things like that. Like, how do we plan on paying this stuff if, we, if the government is not allowing us to go to work? You know what I mean? Like, so there has been some relief. There has been some things as far as like, uh, uh, you know loan forgiveness and eviction forgiveness and stuff like that so it's buying people time until they can figure out what to do about the coronavirus um you know personally as everybody knows i'm a huge supporter of socialism i'm a huge supporter well i wouldn't say socialism but like democratic socialism and i'm a huge supporter of like bernie sanders and people who want centralized medicines and want more government involvement on the on a day-to-day basis um we've went through too much deregulation of things like, you know, uh, rent and just home and like just home loans and things with the banks, like so much deregulation. And some of the stuff needs to be regulated by the government. And, you know, we pay our taxes every single day. We pay taxes for the things that we buy, for the things that we drink, for the things that we drive, for the things that we live in, everything, everything has a tax on it. And we should be able to get some of that tax money in times like this to help our citizens, you know, keep their houses, you know, me as a single father, you know what I mean? Like, I don't like, I I would rather lose my car than lose my home, you know, because thankfully there's things like ride shares and things like Uber, Lyft, you know, things that I could get to a job and back and it wouldn't be so hard, but it's still scary, you know what I mean? And this is this isn't the type of things that our citizens of the one of the greatest countries to have ever existed on the face of the planet. This isn't one of the things that we should be worried about on a day to day basis, and and I, I think a lot of you guys can agree with that. 
it. I know there's going to be a big argument to talk about, well, financial literacy and financial this and financial that, which is great. But what about financial literacy for business owners? Why don't they have a fund set up for things like this? Why doesn't our government have a financial literacy test for themselves? Why don't they have financial literacy practices? You know, to be taking in millions of dollars, millions of millions of dollars a year, they should all have, you know, subsidized funds on the side, you know, that can pay their employees during a time like this. You know, and I'm not saying during the whole pandemic. I'm not saying that because, you know, the bosses have their families to take care of, too. But, you know, their yacht and their five or six vacation homes that they own, you know, I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about them paying for that shit, you know, because I I don't have a yacht. I don't have vacation homes. I have a house that I live in, my one home, my one car, you know. So I think we need to start understanding some of these things, you know what I mean? And also during that time, we need we need to reapply those same standards to ourselves. So you guys, as we're out and about, you know, stop worrying about, you know, oh, I can't have my Starbucks today. Dude, fuck your Starbucks. Fuck your Starbucks. Okay? Like, unless you really got the money for it, fuck your Starbucks. Okay? Because you can make coffee at home. You know? I'm a coffee drinker. I can drink coffee every single day. Two to three cups of it every single day. Okay? But fuck your coffee. Okay? Oh, I don't have time to buy some weed. Dude, fuck your weed. I'm smoking weed right now. Dude, fuck your weed. Okay? Unless you really got the money for it, fuck your weed. Like, drink a glass of water. (laughs) Okay? Above all, like, really learn how to lean in to being more frugal. Stay at home. Yeah? Stay at home. Like, social distance. Yeah? And and it kind of sucks because us as humans, you know, we're not meant to be kept alone you know, so people like me, I'm, I'm single, like, I'm super single, yeah, no hoes, no, no side chicks, no booty calls, no nothing, you know, I don't have none of that, so for me, social distancing is easy, it's my everyday life, you know what I mean, and, you know, even then, I still get lonely, you know, so, yeah, reach out to some people, and thankfully, you know, in this day and age, it's easier for us to fucking reach out to somebody, you know, all we gotta do is pick up our phone, we got a list of contacts, all you gotta do is open up Twitter, open up Instagram, Snapchat, Tinder, YouTube, whatever you're on, TikTok, open it up, and you'll be able to, you know, see a a list of people, thousands of people that you can hit up, yeah, so it's, it's, one of those things where, yeah, I understand the panic and the frenzy and the, like, oh my God, like, oh my God, distancing. Yeah, dude, it, you know, it's, it's kind of good for your mental health too, you know? And that's another thing I want to, I want to touch on. Like we have to allow ourselves to get bored more, right? We have to allow ourselves to feel the sting of boredom more, right? Because I feel like in this sting of boredom is when we breed true creativity. That's when our true imagination begins to come out. And, you know, these days we get bored. We're getting bored less and less because we have constant stimulation from our TVs, our PlayStations, Xbox, phones, tablets, you know, all this stuff, all of this crap that is just in a consistent bombardment of our brain. Yeah. Like even right now, like I'm, I was seriously inside bored. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go record a podcast, you know, because I know, <laughs> I know in the beginning of the year, I was like, oh, I'm gonna drop a podcast every single day, but I get bored with that. I get bored with that. I like to kind of accumulate a couple days worth of shit and then talk about it. You know what I mean? And so right now I had accumulated two days worth of quarantine and here I am now pouring it out. Once I hit max boredom, I hit max boredom. Like I took my third nap today. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like my third nap. And that's something too that we could be doing during this. Yeah, like if you're bored and you just feel yourself like lethargic and you're just like, oh my God, life. Like dude, take a nap. Take a nap. Your body needs it. Our bodies need rest. Yeah, and in these days and age, like in, in this day and age, here in California, like oh my God, it's so busy. Like it's so busy all the time. All the time. Someone's going somewhere. There's a workshop. There's a seminar. There's a this, a party, a this, a that, a, 
uh, 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 a fucking, oh my god, I'm having a stroke, uh, you know, a protest, uh, a social, like, justice thing going on, and everyone's always doing something, always doing something, always up to no good, you know what I mean, and maybe we should just, like, pause for a second, pause for a minute, you know, relax, take a, take a, take it easy, take a deep breath, you know, because this shit is out of hand, and we, as a people, have allowed it to to become this way, you know what I mean, and this is one thing that I hope that during this quarantine that we see, one, is we see how our government reacts, how does our government react, how are they treating the people compared to the business owners, right, because the business owners don't make the world turn, the workers do, yeah, workers make this world turn, yeah, I couldn't tell you, I worked in construction, I never saw my boss on a work site, I never saw my boss on a work site. Ever. 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 Never saw him with a hammer in his hand. Never saw him with a saw in his hand. Never saw him pulling wire. You get me? So, who's really making this world turn? Right? And if we're making their pockets fat, if we're, if we're you know, providing the fucking trips to Cancun, then I think during a time of, of a global pandemic, they should be supplying the time for us to be home with our families, right? Like, I'm not taking this time to go fucking on a vacation to Hawaii. I'm taking this time to be home and try to be healthy. Yeah, so I think we need to start really putting, like, like these type of lifestyles side by side and seeing how our government treats one in comparison to the other. Yeah, Jeff Bezos is making millions of dollars per second. Per second, right? And there's a lot of Amazon workers out of work, out of a paycheck, and I don't know how long they plan on being able to survive that way, and during a time like this, it's like, how are they going to be able to get another job when all these businesses are closing down, like, what the fuck, you know what I mean, like, we gotta, we gotta start putting some of this into perspective, yeah, so, and I hope, too, that we start to see the effect that we have on our world, right, like, I, I seen this thing, that in Florence, Italy, that the canals are clear now, and that there's fish in the canals, and that the swans are returning to the water, and it's like, it only took three days, it only took three days of human regression from these areas, to get things back to where they need to be, so if the whole world stops for three days, imagine if we could stop the world for seven, for two weeks, for a month so I hope this puts a new idea on the social constructs that we have to drive these type of cars or that we have to have these certain type of clothes or that we have to have these certain experiences like it's okay to go to Florence and be in the water and go down a boat yeah but does it have to be an engine driven boat do we have to pour our champagne and our coffee into that water because we're too lazy to either fucking drink it or throw it in a trash can you know like what are like what like, what are we really doing to the earth? It's got to be something that we start saying to ourselves, right? And then the last thing is, is like, how are we treating each other during this time, right? Like, how are we treating each other? Are we treating each other with integrity, dignity, respect, humility, yeah, and compassion, sympathy, and empathy, yeah? Because I went to the grocery store the other day, and I racked up on a bunch of food, but there was other people who had three or four shopping carts worth of shit and it's like dude are you guys even going to go through all that like are are you just panic buying because you're stressed out and you're hungry you know I have a two year old son to take to, to take care of and take into account but that is ridiculous you know what I mean like that is ridiculous there's enough cows there's enough milk being produced there's enough water on this earth we don't have a water shortage problem dipshit we have a fucking salt water problem asshole you know what I mean like there's plenty of water in this motherfucker but there's people who are hoarding it yeah like there was a thing I think it was like Tom Arnold or somebody out in LA got busted for hoarding city water right so these are the things that we need to start looking at like these are things that we need to look at these are like that's so unsympathetic of a person and unemphatic of a person to hoard water hoard toilet tissue fucker toilet tissue 
serious? Like, why are you guys hoarding this crap? Like, yeah, it doesn't have an expiration date. I get it. But why are you hoarding it? There's other people who need it too. You know? Like, what happened? What happened to the days? Because I remember this within my lifetime. I am 20 fucking seven years old. I am not that old. I mean, I'm kind of old, but I'm not that old, right? Like, I'm not a young, young buck no more. But I'm not an old geezer either, right? I remember a time when I could walk down the street, walk across the street to my neighbor's house, knock on the door, and ask him for a roll of toilet tissue. What happened to that? What happened to me walking to my next door neighbor's house and asking him for a cup of sugar? Or a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. Yeah? What happened to that? What happened to those days? Now, yeah, I get it. Like, you know, you can't feed you, you can't feed the poor without feeding your own home first. You know, I get that part. But when did we become so incompassionate to other people, to their struggle, to their life? Right? And I think that we need to start taking time to look at look at our humanity. You know what I mean? Like, where where is this going? What is this leading us to? You know, what is this what is this turning us into? These are questions we need to really, 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 really look at ourselves in the face and ask. You know, because when coronavirus twenty twenty C O V I D nineteen is over, we'll only be able to look back because hindsight is twenty twenty and see all the mistakes that we've made as people and all the things that we've taken advantage of, the hugs, you know, the times somebody sneezed and we didn't say, bless you. The times that people coughed and we didn't say, hey, are you okay? Do you need some water? You know, like here in California, like, you know, because I, I can only compare it to where, I, where, where I've been and lived. In North Carolina, when you sneeze, people say, bless you. You know what I mean? In California, they don't. And I don't know if it's because it's, you know, not very, like, it's, like, not PC, like, it's not politically correct. But it's like, dude, you know, even if you don't say bless you, at least be like, you know, ganzuntite or something, or salute. You know what I mean? Like, like something, you know, like something. Like, like you know, even say a little prayer inside of yourself for that person. You know what I mean? Like something, man, because this is crazy. Like, where is our humanity? Where is our care for the next human being? Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it happening? Because this is, this is like a dream. This is like a really weird dream that we're all dreaming at the same time. Yeah, matrix theory type shit. And it just begs the question of is where is our humanity? Yeah, like that, like the whole thing. From the owners of the businesses to the owners of the banks to the to the to the people you know fighting at the grocery store and to the people not willing to share with each other, you know what I mean where's your, your humanity? The whole world is going through this right now. The whole world, the whole world. It was bad enough. It's been bad enough with Flint here in America. Flint, Michigan hasn't had clean drinking water in like over five years I think it's six years now though but in over five years they haven't had clean drinking water and no one has done anything about it no one nobody I don't talk about it enough and I don't fight for it enough and these are the things that we got to start asking ourselves like where is our humanity where is our care for the next human being that lives literally 20 feet from our house 30 feet from our house our next door neighbors, our teachers, our mailmen, yeah, I have a friend, right, whose dad is a UPS pilot, and he's trapped in Alaska because of this, and he can't come home to his family, so where is the compassion, we're not thinking about these people, we're not thinking about all the people that make this world turn, all of our collective contribution to make this world turn we're not thinking about it enough and this is something that we need to start thinking about it's only right it's only right if we stop thinking about these things if we stop putting these things at the forefront of the discussions where will it lead us down what path 
will it lead us? With this whole scope of this whole thing, where will it lead us? And this is, these are questions that we need to ask ourselves. You know, what is going to be the new era, the new generation of human being? What is going to be the hum- what is going to be the human race that we allow our children to inherit after all of this is all said and done? When it's all said and done, what type of world will we leave for our children to inherit? Because I'm 27 years old. I will have very clear memories of this because, you know, the government is saying that we're going to be on lockdown until like July. Some places are saying August. Now, there's been a couple people that have tested positive in California. You know, in California, it's a huge state and it's a dirty state. It's a very filthy state. So how far will this virus spread to places like Ventura? and Oxnard and Port Wainini, places that I call home. We have to ask ourselves, what will this world be like? What will we turn it into? Yeah. And above all, above all, what was our humanity like? How did we treat our neighbors? How did we treat our friends, moms, and dads? How did we treat the stranger who lived two houses down? We need to ask ourselves that. Because in this day of recording and everything being on record, our children, our children, will be able to look back at your Facebook page, at your Twitter, and your Instagram. They'll be able to scroll down. Yeah, like I can already, I can already pull up anybody who's listening to this right now, right? If you gave me your Facebook page, I could pull up any post you've ever made about coronavirus or COVID-19. I could pull it up within seconds. Within seconds, I could pull it up. That's crazy. That's the power of the search engine integrated into social media platforms like that. Like Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, right? I could pull it up super easy. Anything that's ever been tagged with coronavirus or COVID-19 in Instagram, I can pull it up within seconds. We all know how to do that, right? So our children will be able to do that, but even faster. Because this shit only gets better and better and better and better. So what do you think our kids are going to say when they see our posts? Because I've seen some crazy-ass posts about coronavirus. I've seen some crazy shit being said about other people in this sickness. So I, I really just beg people to really think about what we're doing. You know what I mean? Like, where where are we allowing this hysteria to draw, like, to push us towards? You know what I mean? Like, right now, it really feels like we're out of a epi- like we're like in an episode of some like crazy game show. You know what I mean? Like Survivor Series or something, or or like we're literally stuck in in Batman: The Dark Knight Rises. You know what I'm saying? Like when the when the world begins to burn, people show, start showing their true colors. Or even the Dark Knight. You know what I mean? Like when the world's ready to burn, everyone starts showing their true colors about how they feel about certain things. Yeah. And I just don't want people to expose themselves a little too much. Yeah. Because in this time of hysteria, instead of worrying about self, we should be coming together as a tribe. Yeah. And showing more love more compassion and more ability to go out and help another person yeah so this is my little lecture little rant on coronavirus i'm gonna finish smoking this bowl i'm gonna go inside drink some sweet tea and read a book i suggest everybody pick up a book pick up a new hobby get creative you know what i mean like i said when boredom strikes that's when creativity flourishes. And take the time, you know? Well, learn something new. Yeah, learn how to knit. Learn how to, you know, learn how to draw things. Learn how to build something. Learn, learn. just learn, learn a few things. Learn a few things and, and everything will be okay. And, you know, I wish everybody the best. I hope everybody stays safe. Hope everyone stays healthy. 
you know what I mean? Practice social distancing. Don't take it lightly. Yeah, I mean, at 27 years old, I'm not at very high risk for this thing, but I'm still taking it very seriously because I come in contact with so many people throughout the day. And not only that, like even, even if I only came in contact with one person, me affecting one person's life negatively is, that's like a, that's a big one for me. You know what I mean? Because I only want to make positive impacts on people. I only want to make positive, positive, positive. I want to live positively. Yeah. So everybody take, take the time to do something good with yourself. Take the time to, you know, learn something, read a book, you know, catch up on your homework, catch up on, you know, certain things that you've been wanting to finish or, you know, read that book or write that blog or, you know, even something not as serious, you know, send that text message to somebody, send that message to somebody that you care about, send that, send that email, make that phone call, reach out. Yeah, this is the time to do it. Yeah, this is the time of all times to show people that you may have wronged or you know, argued or whatever, you know. Show them that you're, show them that you're sorry, and show them that you still care. Yeah. Until next time, I'll be hollering at you guys. All right. Stay motivated. Bang. Yo, what up, everybody? I hope you guys are enjoying the podcast. It would mean the absolute world to me. I mean, the world to me. If you guys could just retweet, share it, tell your friends about it and hit that subscribe button on whatever platform you guys are listening to this to. Again, it would mean the world, man. And I truly appreciate every single one of you. All right. Have a blessed day.